Hello everyone, thanks for joining this video. This will be focused on cloud security on our Catalyst 9000 switches, specifically the umbrella integration on our Catalyst 9200 and our Catalyst 9300 CV switches. My name is Alma Hammond and I'll be going through what Cisco Umbrella is, why we need it in our networks, and also the workflow of configuring it to using DNAC. Based on an IDC Global DNS report, 91.3% of malware in, um, networks use DNS in their attacks. We have 88% of organizations having experienced at least one attack in their network. And finally, the average um, cost of attack on an organization's network approaches almost a million dollars. So now we are seeing more and more organizations also adopting a work from anywhere model. And this is also causing an increase in the frequency and damage of DNS attacks um, in the network. So many of today's cyber attacks in the network leverage DNS, like we saw from the report, 91.3% of malware use DNS in the attacks. And this is because DNS is um, a trusted protocol that is used to publish information that is very critical to the networking user or client. So the you have the user that needs DNS in order to be able to access their apps or services, um, whether they are hosted in the cloud or even locally. So if these DNS services are compromised, um, you have your users in your organizations that need this to work, you know, being able to access the applications. And you have your attackers using this as a means to establish command and control in the network. And from there, being able to cause further attacks and exfiltrate data. So let's take a look at some of the staging techniques that I used um, within these attacks. We have DNS tunneling here. I have a few here. Um, we have DNS tunneling. We have maliciously uh, malicious newly generated domains, and we also have DNS um, spoofing. So with the data that I've shown, it's very necessary for organizations to monitor and analyze their DNS traffic. And that's where Cisco Umbrella comes into play being able to provide that feature risk security solution um, to monitor, detect, and also uh, secure the DNS layer of your network. So I'm going to go more into detail what Cisco Umbrella is. Let's take a brief look at what Cisco Umbrella does and provides. So like I said previously, um, Cisco Umbrella is a cloud-based security solution that will monitor and detect threat fast and also secure the DNS layer of your network. So traffic that is now sent um, from the users in the network is sent to the switches. And now you have the switches that natively support the umbrella connector. So the user DNS query is now being sent from, uh, is sent to umbrella to be able to be inspected and also block requests to malicious and unwanted domains before a connection is even um, established. So that's, that's pretty much what Cisco Umbrella does, taking the user DNS query and transporting it through the Umbrella connector that is natively um, supported on the switches to the Umbrella cloud. And in the Umbrella cloud, you have all those policies being applied to make sure that there's no malicious connections being established. Let's take a look at some of the features that um, is supported, uh, that Umbrella provides. We have um, DNS layer security, which will help to improve security visibility and also detect compromised um, domains and protect your, um, your users from establishing connections with these domains. We also have a secure web gateway, and this is usually used to log and also inspect web traffic um, for full visibility and also URL and application controls in the network. And finally, we do have the interactive threat intelligence, and this is very unique to Cisco Umbrella. Um, it gives a very extensive insight into all of the malicious domains and IPs and URLs that is being recorded because we have um, Cisco Umbrella has access to all these connections that are being made. Um, and so having this insight allows um, Cisco Umbrella to be able to make these predictions um, for your network and um, having them more accurate than it can be um, to be able to protect your, your network. Okay, so now let's see how Umbrella Solution uh, will work in organizations, taking into example a branch office. So with the components of the cloud-based security umbrella integration, we will talk about different components here. So one, we have the host. Um, we have the host here that users from any location that are trying to access different web servers and SaaS applications for work productivity they would initiate that DNS request um, to those web servers and applications and have them re-resolved and um, then be able to access these sites using the IP addresses that they are given. 
Then we have the umbrella connector, which is a component in the Cisco switch that would intercept this DNS traffic and redirect it to the Cisco umbrella cloud or to the internal servers um, for security inspection and policy application. So this umbrella connector is natively supported on the 9200 and 9300 switches. And then now we have the Umbrella Cloud, um, which is a cloud-based security service that would inspect the DNS queries that it receives from, from the Umbrella Connectors and then apply the policies um, that have been set. Um, and then based on that, it's going to return different options of um, either block the page or give um, be able to access the page or even send it for filter, um, further filtering. So that's the Cisco Umbrella Cloud. And then we have the enterprise DNS service or internal service that um, the switch can redirect the DNS queries to um, if it's internal. So now um, let's take a look at an employee that will initiate traffic and send it, a DNS query um, to the switch. Um, the Cisco umbrella connector in the switch will intercept um, this traffic and then we inspect the DNS query. So if the DNS query is for a local domain, the query will be forwarded to the DNS server in the enterprise network. Um, and the Cisco umbrella um, resolver or the connector will also inspect the queries and send the external domains to the umbrella cloud um, for inspection. Now, when it's sending this information to the Umbrella Cloud, it creates an extended DNS record that includes the device identifier information, the organization ID, the client IP addresses, client username in hashed form if required, and then it will add all that and create something we call an extended DNS record and send it to the Umbrella, result, um, umbrella Cloud. So based on the information that um, it gets, the Umbrella Cloud will apply different policies to the DNS query, and after, it will send back the DNS response to the switch. The switch will then forward the response it receives back to the user or the host. So now the DNS response contains the DNS, the IP address of the of the web server that the employee was trying to access. The host will extract that IP and then send an HTTP or HTTPS request to that IP address. So with the aid of the Cisco Umbrella integration feature, the HTTP and HTTPS client requests are handled in three different ways. So either going to send a block page. Um, when the client tries to access the IP, and this shows that the what the DNS the domain that was requested is malicious and is trying to block that connection from even being established. If the FDN in the DNS query is non malicious, the Umbrella Cloud will return the IP address of the um, web server or website that the host requested, and they are able to get the requested content that they they need. And if the FQDN in the DNS query falls under a gray listed domain, um, the Umbrella DNS will return the unicast IP address of the intelligent proxy in the DNS response. And so now all the HTTP traffic from the host to the gray, um, the, the gray listed domain will be proxied through the intelligent proxy and it will undergo um, further URL um, filtering. So that's pretty much how the traffic flow um, works with DNS Umbrella, I'm sorry, with Cisco Umbrella, and how the the queries are handled um, after the IP response is sent back to the host. Okay, so I mentioned how when the switch receives the DNS query from the user, um, it creates something called extended DNS record that contains um, the organization ID, the client IP address, username information, um, and these can be sensitive information that if the DNS query is not encrypted, can be intercepted by an attacker. And so DNS, um, Cisco Umbrella provides something called DNS scripts. And what that does is that the DNS packets that are sent from Cisco, the Cisco device or Cisco Umbrella um, cloud server will be encrypted um, because we have this extended DNS information containing such sensitive information. So for this demo, I'll be showcasing how we can enable this umbrella fe integration feature on a Catalyst 9200 and a Catalyst 9300 switches that are being managed by DNAC using the DNAC dashboard. It's important to note that 
Umbrella integration can be configured on the switch using the web UI or manually on the CLI. However, for this video, I'll be focusing mainly on how we can do it using DNAC. Just to verify the policies that have already been created, we are going to go um, to policies and then we'll select DNS policies. Now, these policies provide the rules to allow or um, deny the DNS requests that we receive, the D Umbrella um, Cloud is going to receive from the Umbrella Connector from the, on the switch. Um, so we have branch policy, default policy. Let's take, for example, the branch policy. Here we can see we have um, the content setting high, um, security setting, all these kind of um, show what we're going to allow and deny. I, um, for the intelligent proxy, which um, looks further into filtering suspicious domains, we can also enable it over here um, under advanced settings. We can also um, log all requests when it comes to the login or only security events. Um, so pretty much it's just a high level overview of what policies we have created um, on our umbrella dashboard, which we have branch policy and then default policy. Also in Umbrella, we can go to admin and we can go to API keys. And from here, we can get the keys and the token um, that we need to be able to um, register our devices to the Umbrella dashboard. So now we go into our DNAC dashboard. And from here, we are, we are going to sync our DNAC account to our Umbrella account that we have. And to do that, we are going to select the menu and then we we'll select system and then settings. And then we we'll select under external services, we're going to select Umbrella. This will allow us to register Umbrella with our DNAC. This allows us to input the keys that we get from the Umbrella dashboard here. And then from that, we can sync Umbrella to the DNAC um, account that we have. We're going to go ahead and enable um, and enforce DNA um, umbrella on our switches. So we we'll select provision and then we we'll select under services, we're going to select umbrella. Now on this dashboard here, we can see that we have something like called umbrella services statistics. And this kind of shows us the number of DNS queries and also the number of blocked DNS um, queries that we have received in our network. Under Umbrella enablement, we can also um, see which devices have been enabled for Umbrella in different sites. As you can see, we have zero enabled. And so we are going to go ahead and enable that for this demo. So I'm going to click on this and then we will select switches in this case. Now we have multiple switches that we can um, use to be able to um, configure our switch. Um, so we are going in this demo, we are going to use a 9300 data switch, which is a 9300 switch. And then it brings us to this page. Now uh, for Umbrella, we need to have um, an in and out interface. The in is connected to the user ports where the DNS queries are going to be um, initiated. And the out is the one interface that connects our switch to the umbrella cloud. And so in this case, we're going to have just one in and one out. We can have multiple ins. So in this case, we're going to have select uh, in interface. And so we select whichever port is in this case. In this case, we're going to select 22. And then we're going to click a pop-up comes in to select if it's going to be an in, out, or disabled. So we select define umbrella interfaces here. And then from here, we can choose what we would like to select in this case in, and then we click on save. We'd also want to go ahead and select the one interface that connects the switch to the umbrella cloud. And here we select the seven, 107 gig port. And then we go ahead and select out one and click on save. So selecting these ports allow, um, allow us to be able to show where we are receiving our DNS queries and where we are sending it out of on the switch. And then we'll select next. Now, I remember in the beginning, I showed you the policies that we had created on DNAs on our umbrella dashboard. And since we synced the umbrella dashboard to a DNA feed, now all these policies have been um, synced to a DNC account. And we can go ahead and select which policy we would like to apply um, across the whole device. If we would like to have a um, specific policy per port, we can also select that. 
Um, in this case, we're going to select a generalized policy that's going to apply to all ports on the switch, which is the branch policy. And then we'll go ahead to select next. And then we'll review the internal domains, um, which can be resolved by the internal networks DNS server instead of Cisco umbrella. And then we'll go ahead to select next. Um, now, when it comes to um, communication between the switch and the Umbrella Cloud, we are intercepting these DNS queries and sending it to Umbrella Cloud over the internet. And this can be in, um, not secure, especially if we have sensitive information in the DNS queries, such as um, client's username, um, IP, um, inter, um, private IP addresses. So you have the option to encrypt or de um, to encrypt or not encrypt this DNS um, packet that we are sending to Umbrella Cloud. In that situation, we are not going to encrypt it. So we'll select no and select next. And this gives us a summary of our configuration on DNAC. We can go through to make sure everything is okay. And then we're going to go ahead and select deploy. And then now, now we can go ahead and wait till we have the um, deployment done. Okay, so now as we can see from our task on DNAC dashboard, we can see that the umbrella configuration was successful. So now we are going to go ahead and go into our switch, the 9300 data switch, and then we're going to show our umbrella config. And from here, we can get all the details that we need. We can see that we have a token register, the um, resolver IPs, we can see the number of interface configurations here. We have our out interface, we have our in as well. And so from here, you can see that the manual configuration we used to do previously, where we would register a switch to the um, to umbrella, we'll be able to configure manually our in and out interfaces. This was all done on DNAC automatically. Now we're going to go ahead and also um, test out to see um, Umbrella from our user endpoint. So we're going to go into a user um, endpoint and try to access uh, a website or a web server that is going to be blocked based on our policy that we set. So now we are in our VM or our user client. And so we're going to go ahead and open a session. We'll try to access a web page or web server that is usually blocked by our in our networks. So we can go ahead and start off with the maybe social networking site that people would want to try to access whilst working, which wouldn't be allowed since it will be a general time waster or seen as a Destructor. So we can go ahead and start off with Instagram. So we can come here, select this to access it or log in. And as you can see, we have a policy applied and we have the umbrella blocked page here. And so in that case, we do have our policy enforced and blocked within our network. So in our umbrella dashboard, we can go ahead and ensure to see if our policies have been enforced. So we can select deployments, select network devices. And over here, we can see a switch here saying it's active on Umbrella. So we do have a Umbrella tunnel up and the status is active. And we could also see that on a network user, they had the page blocked. And so that brings us to the end of this video that showed us what Umbrella is and how to configure it on our Catalyst switches using DNAC. Thank you.